This isn't funny, Amber. Would you like to play a game, Tara? Hello and thanks for joining us for the latest from the world of movies, museums and music. We're starting with the ultimate pastiche of scary movies, Scream is back. It's been 26 years since the original film was released and after three sequels, the ghost-faced villain returns for a fifth time. Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox and David Arquette feature once again, joining a new crop of actors including Melissa Barrero, Jack Quaid and Jenna Ortega. This time, directors J Matt bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette, who go by the name Radio Silence, have taken over from Wes Craven, who died in 2015. Now, the actors have said Craven's absence was initially cause for concern, but that the filmmakers won them over in the end. Matt and Tyler were so committed to, to honoring Wes's legacy. They're such uber fans of his and our directors because of Wes Craven, Made Ready or Not because of Scream. Um, you can't ask for more than that. Um, and they just, they were like kids in a candy shop, to be honest. Hello? It's happening. Three attacks so far. Do you have a gun? I'm Sydney Prescott, of course I have a gun. Something about this one just feels different. I think Wes would be so proud. I think he's looking down right now. He's already seen it, and he's, uh, I think he loves it. Yeah. He's giggling. Yeah. <laughs> you ready for this? Never. I love playing the role of Dewey, and it was really, you know, exciting to read the script and see where they had taken this world and the opportunity to work with Courtney and Nev again and this whole incredible new cast. So I was, uh, I was really excited about it. The attacks were all on people related to the original killers. Whatever his link is to our past, it's pulled us all back here. I was emotional a lot of days on set mm -hmm. because it was very surreal. It was a very surreal experience. And I have watched these two incredible women throughout their careers and admired them. And getting to share a scene with them and act opposite them was just like a biggest, one of my biggest dreams come true. Hello, Sydney. Next, we take you to London, where the Natural History Museum is hosting the annual Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition. These beautiful prints and projections show creatures in their natural and unnatural habitats, an opportunity to travel the world without setting foot outside the British capital. Yenna Lee reports. The skeleton of a blue whale hangs over the Natural History Museum's main hall. It's watching over an exhibit on the world's best wildlife photography. Wander through these halls to take a glimpse of the lives of our furry and less furry neighbours. Nestled atop a Chinese mountain, a baby monkey protected by two females. In the Pacific Ocean, a marine photographer swims in the midst of a school of barracudas, capturing what appears to be infinite depth. And in Brazil, this terrifying spider Suspiciously big, in fact. The show's curator, though, has the answer to this mystery. When people see it, the first thing they, th they think is that this is on a wall, which is not true. And then they read the caption and they say, oh, it's under a bed. But actually, there's an illusion here. Out of 50,000 entries, 125 made the cut, including a French photographer who captured this moment showing a baby orangutan in Indonesia. The mum wanted to rest, so she made a little nest like that in the tree. But the baby wasn't having it. It was full of energy, getting out of the nest and looking around. It was fun to see. 
When at work, Maxi Maliaga wanders around silently for hours. Patience is key for a wildlife photographer. We're super happy because we finally found an orangutan. And not just anyone, but Togos, the big male of the zone, the dominant male. Now we just wait for the sun to rise so we can take photos. A species on the brink of extinction, like many in this exhibit. Others are living through the immediate consequences of climate change. This kangaroo and its baby narrowly survived a blaze in Australia. This jaguar in Brazil is covered in soot after a huge forest fire. And here, we see an elephant being exploited as a circus animal in Thailand. These examples illustrate the exhibit's intentions, show the beauty but also the fragility of wildlife. Staying with museums, we're taking a look now at one of the sensory elements that's been overlooked in the visitor experience in the past, and that's smell. Scents are becoming increasingly important in museums, theatres and also hotels to create atmosphere and to ascribe a signature smell to a place. Venues in France are now deploying perfumes as part of their strategy, as Selena Sykes reports. Discovering a meadow through the eyes of a bee. <laughs> or diving deep into the Amazon rainforest. Audiovisual experiences that have become even more immersive thanks to the use of scent. When I came in, I asked myself, what does that smell? It's like you can smell the earth, humid like from the forest. It's interesting to have worked on that because it makes the images even more real. To take visitors on a multi-sensory ride, the Natural History Museum in Paris has turned to one of France's leading perfume producers, Dobetil Michelon Bertier, who works in this lab with 1,200 ingredients to create the perfect signature scent. There you go. That's it. Exactly. That's the secret formula. It's hidden. Her imagination is in high demand among museums. Her most recent task was to find a perfume for La Grande Odalisque at the Louvre. It was inspired by the painting, so there's an incense burner by her feet. The woman is naked, we see her skin, so the idea of skin, flesh, incense. It allows observers to travel in the painting and in his imagination to find something that will link it back to the painting. Perfumes that evoke nostalgia and transport people to another time and place. More and more museums are investing in perfume, such as the Museum of Mankind and the Hôtel de la Marine, where each 18th century apartment has its own scent. You discover the place with the impression that the owner has just left the room a few minutes ago, and their scent is still in the air. Museums are hoping to provoke new emotions by associating smells with their collections and give visitors a new sensory experience. Moving to music now, here in Paris, the history of hip-hop is being celebrated in an immersive exhibition at Paris's Philharmonic. The Hip Hop 360 exhibition takes a look at the scene and its ongoing evolution, taking in music, dance and street art. Pierre Delrieux tells us more. It's a cultural phenomenon you wouldn't expect to find in a museum, but hip-hop has taken over the Philharmonie de Paris. A powerful symbol for this artistic and musical movement born in the streets of New York in the early 70s that made its way to France the following decade. Defined by rapping, DJing, breakdancing and graffiti writing, it soon took over the French streets and metro, causing quite a cultural and generational clash. It's all over the walls, even in the metro. Brand new walls covered in graffiti. What's the point? We only live once, so we might as well have fun and we do it in a productive way. Is that the right word? I don't know. You can edit it out. At 20 years old, Joey Starr was a graffiti artist before making it big with his band NTM. In the late 80s, early 90s, other future stars made their debut 
abuse like MC Solar. A new wave taking France by storm, documented at the time by a young photographer. I got into this movement because I was barely 18 and it was the movement for youth in Paris. It spoke to a diverse crowd and it offered a new way to create, to express ourselves and to exist. Hip-hop has since become one of the heavy hitters of the music industry. Today, the top 10 streaming artists in France are all rappers. And pioneer bands such as NTM have their own biopic. Breakdancing has also become an institution. Paris's famous Châtelet Theatre hosted the World Breaking Championship this past December, and the dance will be making its grand debut as a new Olympic discipline at the Paris Games in 2024. A form of recognition for hip-hop culture as a whole. Established, but always moving. And finally, a man who's no stranger to the history of hip-hop, Kanye West, who's just announced he'll be headlining the Coachella Festival in April in California. In addition to that concert, the rapper's journey from entrepreneurial mastermind to international superstar is now the subject of a three-part Netflix documentary. Genius, a Kanye trilogy, uses behind-the-scenes footage from the past 20 years that's been put together by filmmakers Kudi and Chike. It'll premiere online at the Sundance Film Festival before being made available to stream in February. We'll leave you with the trailer. Otherwise, do remember our website. We're on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. They're doing a documentary on me right here. Oh, <laughs> Very rarely do you encounter self-contained people. This man can do everything himself. He living it. So he's like God saying, I'm about to hand you the world. Just know at any given time, I can take it away from you.